Hello. Hello and welcome to the Sport Geeks. That's a little weird, you know. The last time we did a live episode of something like this, it was like the Golden Sports Report a year ago. So thank you for watching this post uh, post live show, I guess, because nobody's here yet. So we're gonna start anyways. But I'm Andy, and this is Dylan, and we hope to have a good show for you when you do watch this. We put a lot of effort into this mock draft and we both had our own and trying to make consensus was difficult. Uh, Dylan, how do you feel about this whole, this whole mock draft and how you think it turned out? I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, I like to think that the two of us are pretty well versed in sports and we've done a fair, fairly decent amount of research for this to put this together. Then we had, we were online discussing for two hours the other day in, in order to combine our two mocks into one that we found suitable to present to you all tonight. So I think it's interesting experience. We're changing up our format a bit for this show, and I hope you all enjoy it. Yeah, by the way, in the comments below, when you do end up watching this, if you prefer a show like this on Google Hangouts, it takes a lot less time to upload. And if you think maybe a live show would be something that you'd rather us do again in a different format like this, or, you know, we, we have many ideas planned if we do go down this route or if we stick to the debate route. We, we like both. This had a few debates in it. We will show you kind of what our th uh, thinking was behind some of our picks because we did agree on some pretty – pretty easily and then there were some that were kind of like hey this pick we were going to fight about we took three and a half out well probably like three hours trying to do this and we had a couple picks that were kind of questionable so hopefully you enjoy it we do have a viewer when you watch this comment below your opinions after about 10 picks we will check the comments and we will take feedback and questions and talk about it and see what sort of things you think about when we uh, make our picks. So we'll start with Edmonton. We'll start the mock draft. We both didn't pick McDavid. I had Hannafin and Dylan had Eichel. So we, we debated about this for a long time. And, you know, we both came up with McDavid for Edmonton. Buffalo, we wanted us to get McDavid. That's why we picked the other two guys up above Buffalo. But it just so happened we got Eichel. So number one was definitely McDavid. Number two is Eichel. But number three is where we started to debate because Arizona's starting to maybe trade the pick and things like that. I had Strom. Dylan, who did you have at number three to Arizona? At number three, I went with... Top defenseman in the draft, Noah Hannafin. And our thinking behind this, we had, we had different ways of thinking, and it did have a trickle-down effect. So we will talk about the three picks kind of that are in succession there, Arizona, Toronto, and Carolina. I went Strom, Marner, Hannafin. And the reason I did that was – you look at Arizona's depth, Arizona has nothing. I'll take a minute and talk about this, and Dylan will go. Strom could have provide could provide a a boost to Arizona right away, put some fans in the seats, things like that. He they need a center, they need a winger, they need they need everything. They really need everything. There's a reason why they're at the top of the draft like this. And I thought. You know, you need a guy that can put the puck in the net to put people in the stands because Arizona may not even be there soon. So there is a thing with that. I had Strom. Dylan had Hannafin. Dylan, your opinion on Arizona? Well, as you said, Arizona's a team that we agreed could take just about anything with their uh, somewhat of a lack of depth. But I looked at Hannafin as he is – pretty well regarded as the top defenseman in the draft. They already do have uh, some good forward prospects on their team. They have Max Domi. They have uh, 
Anthony Duclair, uh, Mikel Bodger is still pretty young, and you can say they have Oliver Ekman Larson on defense, and Hannafin could be a future line mate with OEL, and they could end up as one of the top D pairings in the league as this team, we presume that event someday they will be con in contention. And we know that they also have pick 30, which we'll, that we'll get to later if you stick around. And so they have two pretty good spots where they can address these needs. And I think at this point, they'll just go with Hannafin. And in the end, we did we did think Hannafin should be at number three. So that was a win to Dylan on the third pick. He won that little argument we had. After that, I had Marner and then Hannafin. Dylan, who'd you have at four and five? At four and five, I had Strom and then Marner as a product of our, our the way we had ours arranged. We both agreed that Dylan Strom was a better prospect than Marner. So ultimately, that's why we settled on Toronto and Carolina taking the next best forwards. Yeah, we with Toronto, Toronto was kind of like they need a forward, they need a center. So Strom or Marner, whoever was there, we would take the top guy out of those two. And with Carolina, it was kind of like clean up the mess, whoever was left out of those three of the second tier, even though most drafts, they could be a first tier. Uh, that made sense there. So that was that. And then New Jersey's pick at number six. We talked about this for a little bit because I had Miko Rantanen going to the Devils. And I thought they needed somebody that was once again, kind of like Arizona, put people in the seats. You need a guy that can put the puck in the net. New Jersey, you look at their depth and their prospect pool, their prospect pool is probably the worst in the league. It is the retirement home of the NHL, in my opinion. And they need somebody to come in and score goals for them, make people excited about watching. And Miko Rantanen is that guy. So that's a thing. Um, sorry about the noise and stuff like that. So, but I had Miko Rantanen going to New Jersey at number six. Dylan, how did you feel about that? Miko Rantanen's a solid prospect, but I think New Jersey would go with Ivan Provorov in my individual mock here. He's a talented defenseman, a bigger, at least about six feet, and he's been rising up a lot of draft boards and mock drafts lately from what we, I've been reading in the news. He's, some people think he could even enter the top five and knock one of those guys out, but I'm not quite sure about that. But I think New Jersey, they do need, they need everything more so than Arizona needs everything. And I think taking that solid cornerstone defenseman to start building forward and going around would be a great boost to their team. They, it makes sense. Dylan made sense. I made sense. The way we came down to it, we, we went with Rantanen. I got that one. Um, I think what it came down to really was Eric Jelena and John Merrill. They have two young defensemen there in New Jersey. So it made sense kind of, well, eh, kind of. It made sense for them to go forward with those two young defensemen to kind of build out on the back end. Although Jelena doesn't play much. He's like the new Mark andre Bergeron because he plays a lot of power play time and hurts you five on five. Um, next at number seven, we agreed. We didn't agree on many. We only agreed on four picks total, this whole, uh, this whole mock draft. So Lawson Krause went to Philly, the big boy, the, uh, Big forward out of the O. So we both agreed on Lawson Krause at number seven. Number eight, I had Provorov going to Columbus. I believed they needed the next, the best 
player available. They had Sonny Milano. They have Ryan Johansson. But I felt they needed defense. So I went with Provorov to Columbus. Dylan? For Columbus, in my individual mock, I had them taking Zach Wierenski, another who's also a defenseman. But in my mock, obviously, I, obviously Ivan Provorov was not on the board at this point, which... So we had similar thinkings in terms of defense, but in terms of how our boards were falling, that caused the difference of opinion. And ultimately, we settled on Provorov as we believe him to be the next best choice of available defenseman in our consensus. And yes, so Provorov went to Columbus. Yeah, defense kind of made sense there. It, it did, and it was between Provrop or Warinsky. At number nine, we had a disagreement with the San Jose Sharks pick. I had the big boy Pavel Zaka, Zaka, however you want to pronounce his name, 6'3". He is bigger than Lawson Krause, actually. But I viewed him as the guy that could replace Joe Thornton, and with his size and with the scouting report, it said he could make plays and he was very solid in all around play. And you look at their team, they have Thornton, they have Marlowe, two older guys. They don't really need anybody on the back end. And although they have Couture and Pavelski there, I was like, hey, a big forward, a big center to replace Joe Thornton to feed these guys the puck was the way to go. Uh, so I had Pavel Zaka going to San Jose at nine. Dylan? At nine, I had similar thinking in terms of a bigger guy. Uh, Timo, I went to Timo Meyer. He's not quite as tall as Pavel Zaka. He's about the same in terms of weight, but he plays on the wing. There, he does have the backup position of being able to play center, but if you draft a player as a wing, that's, it might make sense to keep him there. I was looking at they, Logan Couture's going to be their top-line center of the future. They also have Joe Pavelski, who will be around. Joe Thornton, there's rumors of his departure, but we don't know if that's ever going to happen or not. And they also have Thomas Hurdle, who can play both center and wing and is probably their current top prospect. So I went with size and I stuck on the wing because I think the way their team is currently set up, I think they have more than enough at center to continue along and go with a winger. I think it helps out with their overall depth. And this was probably one of the closer debates that Andy and I had. We spent a good amount of time on it, and it was probably one of the hardest uh, settlements that we, to come to. I still have the quarter on my desk. We, we flipped a coin. We couldn't decide. This one took a good 20 minutes to talk about trying to – we all of a sudden were like San Jose Shark scouts trying to figure this out. What were we going to go with? What were we going to go with? And in the end, we went with Timo Meyer, and it makes sense. Um, you know, San Jose is going to take a high power guy in California. You need a lot of scoring to get people in the seats. You can't be a defensive team and expect to win while well, expect to get people to watch your games and in uh, Northern California. So that's the thing. So Timo Meyer was at number nine to San Jose. Number 10, I had Zach Wierenski going to Colorado. We look at Colorado, Duchesne, Landeskog, McKinnon. No, you don't need, you don't need any more of that. You don't need any more of that. You guys need some defense. Defense is something that you guys need. So I went with Marinsky, the American kid. He's playing in college, but get, maybe he needs no, he'll need another year of college play before he gets NHL ready, and I expect him to play in the NHL next season. So I went with Zach Marinsky to Colorado at 10. At pick 10 for me, I went with – this is where I took Miko Rantanen. And you can look at Colorado and say that they have a wealth of young – forwards there have been a few trade rumors but obviously we can't predict those 
And Migo Randon's talented forward, we already discussed him a bit when we had him go at six to New Jersey. With him already off the board in our consensus, I agreed with Andy that defense would be a good way for Colorado to go at this point, and we ultimately settled on Zach Wierenski here. Yeah, it was kind of like best defenseman available at that point, and Wierenski is the third best defenseman in this draft for a while. Provorov and him were fighting, and it was kind of like who's going to be number two behind Hannafin. And like we said earlier, some people had Provorov above Hannafin. I saw a mock draft yesterday or the day before that had Provorov going four, Hannafin going six, and Stro and Marner going three. Like it was a mess. And you know there are, you know these teams, a lot of these players in this area here from about three to ten. There is a lot of movement there. And to recap, we had McDavid won to Edmonton. Buffalo took Eichel. Arizona took Strom. Toronto took Marner. At five, no, I'm an idiot. I had Strom going to Arizona. It was Hannafin at three. I got to learn how to read. Hannafin went three. Strom went four. Marner went five. Miko Rantanen went six. Lawson Krause, one of the four picks we agreed on, went to Philly at seven. Provorov at eight to Columbus. San Jose took Meyer at nine. And we had at number 10, Colorado taking Zach Wierenski. So we'll take this moment, kind of look at the comments if there are any. By the way, after, the vid after we do the mock draft, comment below your opinions on how you th think our mock draft went maybe how it compared to the draft that's happening in a couple of days and we'll look at them we need some feedback if you like this idea that we're doing a live show or not that's up to you and yeah so i'm going to check the comments real quick dylan what like with this mock draft do you did you and i i asked you before how you felt about it but did you enjoy this kind of um video more than our previous debate videos that we did? It's a tough question, actually. Um, certainly, I've had a lot of fun with our previous 10 videos in our debates. But after 10, uh, both of us being big fans of the NHL draft and having it come up soon, we thought, this would be an interesting topic. I definitely had fun doing the research. This is something that we've explored before previously on a, our past shows. And I always love researching the prospects in the draft, whether it be hockey or football. But this retains that debate element. So I thought this was definitely a fun idea. And if we can implement this going forward, I'd be happy to if the fans like it i'd love to hear about it if you don't like it i'd love to hear why you prefer the old way and so please give us your comments on this because we, we have fun doing this so let us know yeah we we had a good time doing this it took a lot of effort and the thought processes that went behind it were fun to think about we have joked before Maybe we jump out of the sport element and we maybe do a fun uh, debate or draft. The joke always is the cheese draft. So maybe one time we'll do a joke draft and we'll draft cheeses because that was that was a thing. But that's way off topic. We're talking about NHL hockey here. And this was fun. We've done in the past scouting players and stuff and looking at many different players it's like, wow, this draft does look deep as anticipated. And I'm happy that the Sabres have three picks in the first 31. And a lot of these teams are going to be happy with what they get. So I'm just going to check the comments one more time. If there are any, if there aren't, I'm just going to move on. By the way, subscribe to the channel so you know when we go live, if we do do live shows or if we upload a video, you'll know when we upload the video and like or comment because that'll get the video seen higher and search results and things like that. That's kind of YouTube's stupid way to 
show your video. It actually is only shown to like one third of the people before. Before it has comments and likes and people actually want to watch it. So let's see. All right, no comments still. That's all right. So next at pick 11, we have who did I have at pick 11 with Florida's pick? I had Dennis Gurianov. And I felt like a winger here was necessary for Florida because Florida just drafted Ekblad. They just drafted Barkov. You think of Huberdu. You think of uh, players like that. You think of Good Branson back there. He was a top five pick defenseman in 08, I believe. And he's like the worst out of the first round of 08 defenseman or something, which is unfortunate for Florida because that was a really loaded draft. And uh, – yeah, so I had Garyanov going here because you need to have a uh, guy with Barkov as your future, a guy that can put the puck in the net, and that's very important. Florida's going to need that as they uh, they need some scoring. I think they need a lot of stuff. And with Yarmir Yager there too, it'll really help having a older presence there. I think he signed a two-year deal to stay there. So a two-year deal, two years from now, you could expect this kid probably to be ready. Uh, being a 12th overall pick, and maybe he learns a thing or two, just like the other kids are. So I had Gurionov going to Florida at 11. Pick 11 is where I had Pavel Zaka going. I figured Florida, they got their star defenseman last year in Ekblad, and though they do have guys, Bustad, Huberdo. Uh, Barkov, it's been a bit up and down in terms of their levels of success up to this point. So I figured they definitely should look a little bit at forward. I went, went with Pavel Zaka. He's got the size. And it just made sense to me for them to want to bring in more of that, more of the depth, and build up a depth of forwards that going forward that could help them become, move up to the net. We saw them be obviously much better than they have been this year, but take them up to that next level of playoffs. And part of what sold me on our consensus going with Guryanov was the winger aspect. He can come in, he can help Barkov and Huberdo become better. He can learn a little bit under Jager if they have somewhat of an overlap of time in Florida. And he ultimately could be end up as one of their key pieces in their top six playing alongside Barkov and Bugstad and Huberdo and helping that team become a contender. Yeah, young teams got to get going. Roberto, the, the thing with them is they may need a goalie. Maybe later in this draft they should consider getting a goalie. Um, Roberto Luongo is definitely past his prime. So that's the thing. Um, at 12, with Dallas's pick, I had chosen Meyer going here. And my opinion on that was obviously he's already gone. Meyer was a guy that could have helped on the wing for Ben. Well, not Ben. Ben's a winger as well. Sagan and Spezza have a winger there on your second line. He may have been ready for them this year. He could have been one of those guys that really coming from the queue, the queue is an offensive league. And I'm going to get to that later. We, if you stick around, pick mid twenties, I'm going to go on a rant, but coming from the queue offense, he scores a lot there. It makes sense for him to come to the NHL this year, and it would have helped Dallas, in my opinion, putting him with Valerie Nutushkin above him, but having them on the same team, that would have uh, that would have really been a high-powered offense for them, a high-powered young top six, with the exception of Spezza. Well, this is a point uh... – 
for Dallas, I went with Kyle Connor. He is a name we haven't seen yet. He's more of an offensive forward. They already have a lot. Obviously, they have high-powered offense in uh, Sagan, who was going to be there for a long time. Jamie Ben's going to be there forever. He's got a bit of a two-way game. And they do have Nutrition. They have Jason Spezza. They have good players there. And I figured Kyle Connor would be able to come in help their offensive depth so that the shoulder of the load isn't placed all on that top line and be able to make create more of a balance within the, the roster. And because sometimes, sometimes it's easier to find the two-way guys a little later, but the scorers, that's, I feel like sometimes that's a little bit harder to find. But... Ultimately, this is a place where we settled on neither of our picks from our individual mocks. Yeah, uh, that guy we really talked up earlier, well, you know, Pavel Zaka. This is where he goes. He falls to 12, and we're like, hey, he's went in both of our mocks already. So we both think highly of him, and it's about time we kicked him. Because you think about Dallas, their bottom six. He's a he's a third line center, future second line center for them, and he fits right in there. They could use a two way center there. You know, Cody Eakin is a little guy. He's not a big boy, and Pavel Zach is a big boy. So you throw him in there, takes that spot up as a third line center in you know two three years. And that's something Dallas could look forward to. With the next pick at 13, Los Angeles, we both had Barzil there at Los Angeles' pick. And that's the last pick that we agreed on. So there wasn't much debate for this one. And that's the thing. So, Dylan, what, did you, what made you think Barzil should go here to L.A.? Barzil, he's... A great prospect. Uh, some people even think, I mean, he's another one of those guys that uh, could end up, there's that big range of uncertainty. Some people think he's top 10. Some people think he's just outside the top 10. I think he fits with LA and what they'd be wanting to do. Uh, coming in, he's great. Two, he's great two way, which is a, it's a big thing that, uh, I think helps him out in terms of going to LA. Their entire team is like that. And at this point at 14, if people like him enough to say he could be top 10, obviously I think I don't think the Kings would think any think much different and I think it'll be a good fit. Yeah. I I agree. Completely, Barzol is definitely a guy that you could see going in the top 10. You could see going anywhere in this. Maybe 8 to 15 range. You know, Columbus's pick up there. And uh, you think about 15 all the way down to Calgary. You know, anywhere in that range. So we had Barzol at 13. At 14, we had a disagreement with the Boston Bruins. Now, as sad as it is to say, the Sab we, us as Sabres fans know a lot about Boston and kind of, you know, have an idea of what they have and what they don't have on the roster. So, Boston, I went with Paul Bittner. He's a big boy, and he's 6'4", and you think to yourself, well, geez, if there is a Boston forward, he's got to be big. It's either a defensive center or a big winger, and – they don't really need a center with Spooner and uh, Griffith coming up, the young kids. So it makes sense to get a winger here. Pasternak's more of a smaller goal scorer. So you need a tougher guy. And I felt Paul Bittner, this may be a little high for him. Some people don't even have him in their top 30. He reminds me of Milan Lucic. He, his scouting reports say a tough guy to play against. A guy that goes up front of the net, puts it in the net, will take a punch. And, you know, that sounds like a future Milan Lucic for Boston when 
it's time to trade Milan to get some picks or something like that, you know, he's getting older. So I felt Paul Bittner would uh, be a good pick here for Boston at 14. With Boston at 14, I took Jacob Larson. He's a defenseman. That's where we had our disagreement. He is more of a two-way defenseman. I think Boston's somewhat known for their overall depth on their team. And it's something that we as Sabres fans hate to play against because they have they can just send out wave after wave. I think Larson will be able to come in, help out some depth on the, more of the defense. They do have young guys like Krug and Hamilton, but there are also guys like Chara who met his time may be limited of, in terms of number of seasons left. And I went with Larson. He's the number three European prospect in central scouting uh, final rankings. And I think... He would be a solid choice for Boston. Ultimately, though, in our debate, we ended up going with Paul Bittner, saying, I think at one point I brought up how whenever Boston tries to address more so of a skilled forward, they end up not producing as well as one would expect, as we've seen somewhat with when they took Tyler Sagan, who's obviously a higher pick, and guys like Riley Smith. So... We went, so as long as it was a bigger, more physical guy, I was comfortable with them taking a look at that position, and we settled on Bittner. Yeah, it, I, yeah, the, I got Bittner. I won that one with Boston. Bittner is definitely the guy for them. He makes sense for them going forward. At 15, things got a little fishy. We didn't really talk about this too much. We... I guess we had a defenseman debate, um, even though it kind of, this is going to come off as a little weird, but we had guys that we didn't use as our consensus picks. So at 14, uh, 15 for Calgary, I picked Nick Merkley. I thought, you know, uh, a good forward for them to have going forward. You think to yourself, their defense is pretty set with Gio Darno back there and Russell. Their forwards are pretty young and stacked with Goudreau, Monahan, Bennett. But I thought, you know, you need a winger. You need a guy that'll bang a little bit. He's got, he's got the ability to have a two-way game on the wing. Something that maybe could allow Bennett and Goudreau and Monahan to take advantage of. And you think about it, Yuri Hoodler is pretty old. He's getting up there. I don't know how he scored so many points as he sees him, but he did. They made the playoffs this year. And it's a thing, like, Calgary made the playoffs before we did. That's embarrassing, but Calgary did it. And I had Merkley going here at 15. Dylan? I don't necessarily think it's embarrassing that they made it before. So when you look at uh, their roster, uh, the Flames are my number two team after the Sabres. Some of you may know that. And I had them addressing defense here with uh, Jakob Sboro. I, I looked at the Flames and thought about what do they need. And I went back and forth a little bit. And I figured they could use a defenseman. Obviously, they do. Uh, their captain, Giordano, their captain, is there and will presumably be there for a while. And they have guys like Chris Russell and... Tyler Wilderspoon will be a prospect coming up. But when you look at their forward, they have Monahan, who's projecting to be a star. Gaudreau, who finished, third, I believe, third in the Calder voting tonight as they announced the awards. Then they have guys like Sam Bennett, who will be coming up. They have Max Reinhardt, uh, Michael Furland, who's a, especially in the playoffs, turned into a great bottom six depth piece. And... After weighing that around a lot, I think I was a bit more lenient or leaning more towards them settling on a defenseman here. And I went with Floral. And so did we for our consensus. 
Yeah, it was it was a thing because Dylan's mock draft did have Larson above Zaboro. I honestly didn't have Larson in my mock draft in my first 30. If most of the things I was looking at, he was past 30 pick. Um, and we went with Zaboro. Larson just didn't provide a game that made sense for Calgary going forward. So Zaboro was the guy that they should have instead of Larson. So that's what we went with at 15 for Calgary. And at 16, with Edmonton's second pick. Now, this is if they didn't trade it. I had Zboril going here. I think it's pretty obvious what this pick is meant for for Edmonton, a piece that's supposed to not help the top 12 forwards. You have a big glaring need on defense. You may have Darnell Nurse, but that doesn't make up for Andrew Ferentz, Theo Peckham, and Nikita Nikkinen, who is getting bought out because he's so bad. So it makes sense go defense here. If they don't trade it, rumor has it, they may trade to the Rangers for Cam Talbot. Bad idea, Edmonton, but that's a whole other thing. So I want Zboro here. I think it's self-explanatory. We just picked him a pick higher, a defensive defenseman for them, a guy that can help them make a good first pass and really help them going forward. You know, you need defensemen back there. You saw Chicago. They have Keith Seabrook, Jalmerson. If you've got three or four horses back there to carry the load, you can get there with good forwards. And we know Edmonton's got a lot of good forwards because they just are the luckiest team that comes to the lottery. And it's so disappointing. It's unfair, but it's the truth. So, Dylan, what do you have with uh, Edmonton's second pick? Well, apparently, I, I mean, I didn't get the memo about the, the glaring need on defenses. My mock, I had them going with Evgeny Sveknikov, Russian winger. And it makes complete and total sense for them to go defense here after acquiring McDavid. Part of me wants to say it would just be the Edmonton Oilers thing to do to add another good uh, forward prospect into the pool. and But they do have new management in Chiarelli there. And with me conceding that, okay, we can go defense here and Zaboro already off the board, this is where we took, went with Jacob Larson where, in this mock draft. Yeah, Jacob Larson was the next best guy. Dylan sold me on him. I, As I said, I really didn't have him in my top 30, so I didn't do much research on him, to be honest, because he wasn't a guy I thought was going to make it in my mock draft. And he's risen up the draft boards recently with a couple defensemen falling, which we'll talk about later. And it, he's taking advantage of the opportunities late, kind of like Provorov is, coming up late in the running here, moving up a couple spots may surprise people. Wonder how far he may come up. After a couple months ago being considered a 35 to 40 pick here, he and ours went mid-teens. So we'll see what Edmonton does with the second pick, whether they trade it or keep it. Um, after Edmonton with Winnipeg's pick, I had Jake DeBrusque, a winger that I viewed as a good a good player to replace Evander Kane with in the future, a couple of years down the road. I know they have uh, Brandon Lemieux, Yol Armia. We know them very well as we traded them. So I think DeBrusk here made sense. A bigger player, a good two-way game. Kind of reminds me of Andrew Ladd when I look think about him. And Andrew Ladd isn't young and he's their captain. So you know, maybe have a guy to succeed him in terms of leadership and his play style, something that obviously the front office in Winnipeg likes to make Lab the captain. So I'm with Jake DeBrusque here at 17 to Winnipeg. I was thinking, uh, clearly I was thinking some somewhat similarly in terms that I went with Nicholas Merkley here at 17 to Winnipeg. A bit more of a two-way guy. And it just seemed to fit. I had similar thinking with Andy, just a different 
the way our boards fell, just a different player, obviously. And in terms he could come in, Winnipeg seems to like their physical players. They had Kane, they do have Ladd, they have Bufflin, guys like those. And the part I really like about this pick is that we both came in with two separate players and two similar style players, and we settled on someone completely different in Kyle Connor. Yeah, I'm going to be honest about Kyle Connor. When I did my mock draft, I kind of – I saw him. He was kind of in those mid-teens range, and I let him fall pretty far. And then I realized, oh, crap, I didn't pick Kyle Connor yet. Let's just stick him here. This team would like a center that's much better than where he is. So, you know, there will be there will be players, at least in our mock draft, obviously, and – uh the real draft, they're just going to fall. And no one's going to understand why. If you think of uh, Mikhail Grigorenko for Buffalo, he was supposed to be a top five pick, and he fell right into our laps. And now we know why he fell right into our laps. At least I do. Uh, not everyone else necessarily agrees, but I, I know why he fell into our laps. And Oh, geez, what a waste of a pick. So, Mikhail Grigorenko, you may get a guy like that. We went with Kyle Connor here future center for them, and it makes sense. You have Mark Sheffley, but Andrew Ladd, like I said, is getting older. He plays a little bit of center, a little bit of wing, and um, they definitely don't need defense. And with Armia and Lemieux coming up, because we were so nice to give to them, to them um, a, a guy like Kyle Connor would make sense to make up some goal, goal scoring down the middle. And uh, with pick 18 and uh, Ottawa here, I went with kind of the dark horse of this draft. Everyone likes him. They're like, where does he go? He could go anywhere in the teens to the late first round, Travis Konechny from the Ottawa 67s. Now, the reason I have him here at Ottawa's pick is home you know, he's playing in their backyards. He's been playing there a few years now. And, you know, they've got firsthand sight of him playing. They're able to scout him every day. They look outside and you're scouting him pretty much. And the kid is a good offensive player for them. You think about it and they have a lot of young forwards there. But, you know, they have a, got a lot of young defensemen there too. They are – a lot of people get to see what he does here. Darcy didn't leave him garbage, by the way. So let's see how the, this last year's draft does and this year's draft in terms of Tim Murray's success. But Ottawa ha have a lot of young players everywhere. So I thought Konechny, a home, not necessarily a hometown kid, but a guy that's been playing there the last couple of years, being a good player for the Sens to go with here um, at pick 20. Dylan? This is actually where I had a Guryanov going. And in our consensus, he went all the way up at 11. So it's a seven pick difference. And again, it made sense for me. Ottawa could be, when you look at all the young players they have, you could make the case that they'll just go best available because they have a lot of young talent there. And so I went with Guryanov. He slipped a little bit in my mock. He's a good offensive player, but and we got to another point where we both said forward and settled on defense, which before I get into that player, I want it's this is part of the process that's interesting. We both think one way, and then when we combine our thoughts and the way our board's falling, we open up a whole new possibility and are able to explore that. And ultimately that's who we chose. We went with Gabriel Carlson, more of a shutdown defenseman. Otto's had a lot of success with the last Swedish defenseman named Carlson they drafted, just won the Norris today. And Gabriel, this prospect is a guy shut down, could be a pot potential future partner of Eric.
you know, I thought the same thing kind of, it was odd. We went both forwards. By the way, I did say pick 20 earlier. It is pick 18. My mistake. Um, yeah, it kind of made sense here to all of a sudden be like, hey, we're investigating this. We're looking this up. We're trying to figure out who should go here. And then it's like, Gabriel Carlson. That makes sense. Carlson and Carlson, a Swedish top pairing. You have the offensive dynamo and Carlson. Well, Eric, Eric, you have an offensive dynamo and Eric. And then you have a shutdown guy in Gabriel. And I think that is a direction that Ottawa should go with in this pick. In the end, we did decide on Gabriel Carlson. So kind of a fun little thing that we came up with on the fly there. At pick 19 with Detroit, I went with Evgeny Zveknikov. Now, reason I did this, they did go with Mantha recently and uh, things like that. And you think about Riley Sheehan, you think about Thomas Tatar, Thomas Jerko, uh, Justin Abdelkader, who's not actually as young as you think he is, but he is, he doesn't have a lot of tread on the tires. And uh, I don't with Speknikov because that's just the Detroit thing to do. They will get the big Russian player and he will be successful because it's Detroit. Detroit just doesn't miss on draft picks, and it's a thing. A lot of people are kind of questioning their Mantha pick right now. All of a sudden, he might be on the trade block. Um, well, he was from the QMJHL, so I don't, didn't think he was going to score 80 goals anyway. But I went with Zbeknikov at 19 to Detroit. Dylan? Uh, with Detroit, I had them taking Paul Bittner. He's obviously a guy that we had already go at pick 14 to Boston. I figured it would suit them to add a little bit more size in terms of their forward depth. But on my board, Sveknikov was already gone, and I had him to Edmonton. It does make sense. They'll take the guy, Edmonton, Andy already said. I mean, Detroit, as Andy said, they don't really miss on picks. There's a reason they've been in the playoffs for – our entire lifetimes, and I think Veknikov could be a good pick for them down the road. Yeah, that's a thing. I haven't missed a playoffs in our entire life. Mike Babcock leaves. He's like, oh, I don't. They're, the future here is just playoffs. Let me go to Toronto, because Toronto – they know about the playoffs, right? Toronto knows all about the playoffs, all about the Stanley Cups. Um, mistake, Mike, mistake. You, uh, you're you not making the playoffs this year. So that's the thing. So Svegnikov at number 19. Number 20 with Minnesota. This is where I stuck Kyle Connor. Um, Kyle Connor made sense here because he was the best forward on the board. I know I stuck him here, kind of was like, oh, well, he's falling. Might as well stick him somewhere. Um, good offensive upside, something that Minnesota could use. I know they have Parise and Pominville and Granlund and uh, Nita Ryder and Miku Koivu, but Miku Koivu is getting older. So, you know, you have a guy here like Connor that could fit right in in Minnesota in a couple of years, two, three years down the road, three, four years. Probably we're getting to the picks now where players may take two, three, four years to develop. Um, you know, they don't need defensemen there. Um, so, yeah, I went with Kyle Connor here to Minnesota. Dylan? Pick 20 is where I had a little bit of a benefit of in our mock, Kyle Connor was already gone, so I got to make the case for Travis Konechny unopposed. And he is good two-way player. Minnesota, they love their hockey out there, and Travis Konechny's a smaller guy, but from what they're saying, he works hard. He plays bigger than his size, and he jumped up like 12 spots from the midterm rankings to the final rankings in terms of uh, and for the central scouting. So he's a hot commodity right now, and I could see him easily going to a lot of these teams around the 20 range.
All right. So now we're at that spot at pick 20 where we would take comments. There are no comments. There is a viewer, though. I don't know. So, you know, if you um, if you have a comment, comment below. If you don't, so be it. Um, to recap, picks 1 through 20. We had Edmonton taking McDavid at one, Buffalo taking Eichel at two, Hannafin for Arizona at three, uh, Toronto taking Strom at four, Marner at five for Carolina, New Jersey taking Rantanen at six, Kraus taking Philly at seven, Provorov going to Columbus at eight, Meyer going to San Jose at nine, Warinsky going to Colorado at 10, Gurionov going to Florida at 11, at 12, Zaka going to Dallas. At 13, Los Angeles taking Barzell. 14, uh, Bittner to Boston. 15, we had Zboril going to Calgary. 16, we had Larson going to Edmonton. Uh, 17, we had Connor going to Winnipeg. 18, Ottawa, we had Carlson going there. Surprising, because we didn't have any opinion on him really at that point. Zveknikov at 19 to Detroit and 20 Konechny going to Minnesota. So comment below your opinion on the top 20. Um, we'll look at the comments real fast and if there isn't any comments we'll just finish the last 10 picks and if you like this format tell us below. We've said it a couple times so if you made it this far hopefully you've said something. If not say something below that will help give us feedback in terms of what we should do with future episodes, whether we stick to the pre-recorded format or we do live events or both, neither, cancel it, whatever you guys think we should do. So I'm going to refresh real fast and figure that out. Dylan, are you keeping track of the uh, award ceremony or no? I believe it's already ended, but I watched a good portion of it. Do you know who won the heart, or is that not something you are aware of right now? Um, I'm just checking it right. I'm, I believe I saw it, but I wasn't paying full attention, so I'm double-checking. And it was actually goaltender Carey Price, which I love that he actually won it because I've been saying all along that he deserves it. Yeah. Yeah, he's the second straight Montreal goalie to win the uh, Hart Trophy. If there are people watching, we would do the trivia question. One of my favorite trivia questions is, who is the last goalie to win the Hart Trophy? Because he didn't. He had a few good years, and he scored a goal that year. So that's why I won the Hart Trophy. Goalie scores a goal, MVP automatically, and that was uh, Jose Three or More. So, yeah, Three or More is his nickname because he did suck after his Hart Trophy years. So, Jose Theodore. All right. Moving on now to the topic of the hour, topic of the night. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. We appreciate any view that we get, no matter where it's from or who it is. So, 21, the Sabres' second pick. There's a lot of rumors coming around this. We are in the Eddie Lack talks. We're in the Cam Talbot talks, and I'm thinking goalie. Goalie, goalie with this pick. I picked Ilya Samsonov. Big goalie. He, uh, everyone's like, oh, don't draft a goalie in the first round. Don't draft a goalie in the first round. I did a little a little research, and not many people think it was enough research, but I looked at five or six drafts, and, well, I may have looked at ten drafts, but, and um, figured out you can draft a goalie in the seventh round all you want, but the chances of getting a starting goalie out of the seventh round compared to the first round is obvious. You want to get a goalie in the first round. It is more efficient to do that. You have a second first round pick 
if you're thinking about trading it for a goalie that's like 28 years old in Cam Talbot or Eddie Lack, you have to really think to yourself, wait a minute. If I pick draft, uh, trade this pick for one of these guys, by the time that my team is ready, these guys are going to be early 30s. Now, there are goalies that have proven that they can stand the test of time, but why not just get the young goalie to come up with your young players? And I went with Samsonov here to the Sabres at 21. I thought he was the best goalie in the draft. And if you're going to trade it, you might as well use it on that position if you think it's that big of a need. So uh, I had Ilya Samsonov going at 21 to the Sabres. Dylan? I agreed that at some point soon, whether before, during, or sometime shortly after the draft, the Sabres will be assessing the and, addre- and addressing the goalie position because right now we only have Chad Johnson under contract. And we have a couple young guys down that aren't necessarily NHL ready. But when I was making my mock, I think I was looking more at pick 31 to be the one used if we were to actually draft a guy. I currently don't know what Mur- uh, what Murray's thinking would be, obviously, but there are plenty of rumors saying that either 21 or 31 could come into play to trade for one. And I think one of those will be used almost definitively to either draft or trade for one. So all- when I was here, my thinking was that 31 would be a goalie, and right here I went with Jake DeBrusque. We spoke a little bit about him earlier, two-way forward. He's a bit of a smaller guy. He's only like 5'11". And I think part of my thinking in it was it reminded me of our pick with Brendan Lemieux, Lemieux last year. Smaller guy, hard worker, two-way forward, and a guy that you don't want to play against. We took him at pick. 31 last season and many thought he was going to go late first round so I pictured DeBrusque as somewhat of a similar pick there were the rumors that Lemieux didn't want to sign with us so that I picked so with that being a failed experiment I think that it would make sense maybe we try again to get that solid depth winger and ultimately I Sided with Andy on this one. He made the case of our depth at wing and compared Jake to even compared Jake DeBrusque to an existing winger on our team in Marcus Felino. I think there's more upside with DeBrusque, but it makes sense to go goalie here and maybe look elsewhere with our pick 31 or even with 51. Yeah, that was the, there was a kicker there. We, you know, at 31, it could have been a goalie. At 21, it could have been a goalie. And the kind of what made me think about it was, do you want to give Arizona at 29 the choice, the prime choice, who do I want at goalie? Do you want to give Arizona that? Because Arizona is probably going to take a goalie too. And, uh, Either pick uh, 29 or 32, they'll take a goalie. So you need, if you want your goalie, if you have your guy between uh, Samsonov or Blackwood, you want to take your guy. So Samsonov at 21 makes sense. If you're going to trade it, might as well use it. At 22, with Washington's pick, I had Eck Erickson. Now, the reason I had Eck Erickson here at number 22 for Washington was Washington really doesn't have a center that can play two-way very well. You think about it, and they have Backstrom, offense, Johansson, offense, Kuznetsov, and he plays wing and center, offense. And then it's like Brooks-like. Brooks-like is not the uh, prime real estate. So he's a good bottom six, but, you know, you're not going to get a lot out of him anymore. Um, Jason Chimera is old. Let's be quite real. He's old. Um, Boyd Gordon, I think, is even still playing there. Old. Jay Beagle is your fourth line center. And I think Eck Erickson kind of fits that third line center role as a uh, shutdown center for a uh, for a checking line. 
for Washington. So I had Eck Erickson there at 22 to Washington. For Washington, for me, with this pick, I went defense with Thomas Chabot, or Chabot, maybe. I figured they do have, obviously, Ovechkin's their guy, and Backstrom's there, too. Tons of offensive talent. Then you look at, they have Johansson, they have uh, Burakovsky, et cetera. And then I looked at their defense. Uh, John Carlson's very young, very good, should be a staple there for a long time. And, but someone like Mike Green could be on his way out this offseason. They brought in guys like Niskanen and Orpik, and Niskanen, I think, did somewhat of a vanishing act this season after breaking out in Pittsburgh, signing a big contract, and I don't think I heard his name once this year. So I think it would make sense for them to go defense, bring in a guy to maybe – I don't think this guy would necessarily be ready immediately, but to someday come in, fill out the depth of their defense behind John Carlson. And in the end, with Washington's pick at 22 – we went with Jake DeBrusque because we both had him going already. It's kind of like the Pavel Zaka, Zaka um, theory. We've already picked him, so he obviously is good enough to go here. Uh, I was talking kind of about that Washington needs a two-way player, and DeBrusque fills that void for them. A lot of people may think that it's filled by Tom Wilson, but you know Tom Wilson is an enigma. He was a highly touted prospect coming out of high, uh, juniors. I almost said high school juniors. And, um, you know, he just doesn't kind of have the offensive touch. He's a, he fights a lot. He does do that. But he doesn't have the offensive touch that everyone thought he would have. So he plays on the first line because he, I guess, protects Ovechkin when, you know, Ovechkin should be able to protect himself. Less career fights than Crosby, question mark. Um, so I think uh, DeBrusque there makes sense for Washington. Um, at pick 23, Vancouver, I went with Colin White. Not the Colin White that played defense for years and years and years, but Colin White. A kid that plays two-way. There's a lot of two-way players at the end of the first round here. A lot of two-way centers, to be quite honest. And um, you'll see how that turns out at the end of our mock draft. But um, I had Colin White going here. A guy that they need centers. Nick Bonino is your second-line center. Like, I know you have Bo Horvat, but you need a forward. Sedins are old. They're old. And I know you have Shinkurek, and you have Vertanen. But I thought, you know, you need a center for those guys besides Horvat. You're going to have two lines probably. Maybe a center that you can put with Cassie and that can kind of play a little tougher and knock people around. So I went with Colin White here to Vancouver. Dylan? For Vancouver, I decided to address defense. I went with Oliver Kylington. I looked at their team. They have Bo Horvat. They have, uh, I'm forgetting his name. Well, they have Zach Cassian, who's still pretty young. Hunter Shinkarek is who I couldn't remember. Um, but I figured they could use some help on defense. And Oliver Collington, he's more of an offensive minded defenseman. So I saw that more so as a fit for something that could help them down the road. And. Ultimately, we settled on Kylington as our pick for defenseman. Despite both of us having Thomas Chabot above Kylington, it came up in our discussion and planning that while we think Chabot would go higher, we think the style of play fits more with Kylington. And that was another interesting spot where we saw a shift in our overall Mox in order to settle on this pick. Yeah, it makes you think of how a, a room full of scouts kind of thinks, you know? Hey, 
we have these two guys here, but there's this guy that we thought would be gone already, but really does he fit the system? And Chabot didn't fit the system for Vancouver. Kylington fits well with Adler uh, as a guy that could be there for long-term. And you think they have Chris Tanev, they have Ryan Stanton, Stanton um, a couple of defensive defensemen. Tanev blocked a lot of shots. I think he blocked the most in the league or something. Second to Chris Russell. Chris Russell blocked a ton of shots. But, um, yeah, so we want Connington there. He was, I think you said he was the top-ranked European skater at midterm and kind of fell off the wagon here at the end. So he falls to Vancouver at 23. And 24, Toronto's second pick. Now, they took Mitch Marner in an, uh, my mock, so I thought to myself, Thomas Chabot goes here. Thomas Chabot is, I had him above Kylington like Dylan said. I had Kylington going a lot later in my mock draft. Um, Chabot is a defensive defenseman, and I thought to myself, you look at their defense. I know their forwards need help, but that's why you address it with Marner earlier. Um, Chabot is a guy that could replace Eric Brewer and Stefan or Stefan Roby Doc. Those guys are old, well past their prime, should probably not be playing. And that's kind of why Mike Babcock's not making the playoffs this year. So I know you have Riley and I know you have Gardner, but I feel like Shabbat was the guy that had to go here at 24 to Toronto. Dylan? I know when we go back to Andy on this one, he's going to have a lot of fun. Uh, for to pick 24 with Toronto, I went with Daniel Sprung, right winger out of the Q. Uh, he did very well offensively in the QMJHL. I figured he could come into Toronto and end up eventually helping Strom. They do have JVR, who's young, and they have Nylander, who's a very good prospect, could be up this year. Uh, they do have guys like Gardner and Riley on defense, so I thought that was a little bit set. But you look, Dion Phaneuf may not, all of a sudden, he may not be going anywhere, and it almost seems certain that Phil Kessel will be. So you don't know necessarily what the return will be on Kessel, but you're losing a big offensively talented forward, and it's looking more like they're going to be keeping the their captain in the defenseman, Dion Phaneuf. So ultimately I went with Sprung in my individual, but when we got to our consensus, uh, Thomas Shabbat did not fall far, and we had Toronto taking him at 24. I can pretty much tell you how this went because I am going to have a little bit of fun here. I was like, Daniel Sprung, okay. And uh, I saw that he went mid-second round in a mock that I was referencing. And I was like, okay, Dylan kind of – Dylan brought this guy up. I didn't really see him too much. I know he was a winger, and there weren't a lot of wingers, really. Um, uh, there weren't a lot of offensive wingers, offensive. And I'm like, okay, let me look at his scouting report. So first thing I read from the queue, and that already gives me a sour taste in my mouth, the queue – I, I did a little research, and it's not much different than the other leagues, but it is. The, the return on top prospects from the queue is not as good as the other two um, Canadian leagues. That I found out. So I'm looking at it. It's like, oh, it's from the queue. And then it says, very offensively gifted. Okay, that makes sense. That's Ellers. That's. Druin, that's Mantha, that's McKinnon, that's offense. And then it said, best at power play, cannot, yeah, most, he could probably play second line, but he probably won't. And that just, ah, oh, I literally said, Dylan, we cannot have this guy in this mock. He's not even going to be considered the rest of the mock. This guy can't, he's not good. He's not good. I don't care how offensively gifted you are. If you can't even play in a top six as offensively gifted and have to play the power play, 
The Sabres drafted a guy like that in the seventh round two years ago, it, uh, last year or the year before, and Victor Olafsson from Sweden. But he was a seventh round pick. So if he so happens to be a power play specialist that at most can play third line, that is an improvement for Victor Olafsson. Daniel Sprung, no thank you. Absolutely not. No, no, bad. Terrible player in terms of a guy that I could see as a first-round pick in the NHL. He needs a lot of help defensively. They said he has problems defensively, and that was just somebody that I could not fathom being a first-round pick in our mock draft or in the NHL in general. Whoever gets him, I'm sorry. That's a project. So uh, my rant's over with Daniel Sprong. Um, Winnipeg's second pick, a.k.a. our old pick. Um, I had Harkins going here. Another center. Um, I thought, you know, have a guy that come. I had DeBrusque earlier, and I was thinking to myself, you know, if you have DeBrusque and you have Harkins, two similar guys in terms of um, age and ability, and I figured, hey, the, you could build around these two guys long-term because you have the defense there. And we've already went over Winnipeg once, but um, I thought it would make sense there to have a guy like um, Harkins to come in and, and play center for them. And if that would be three, four years down the road where we've, we've reached this point where it's three or four years down the road. And, you know, they, they could use that. They could use a defensive center. So I had Harkins going to Winnipeg with our former pick. Dylan? At pick 25, I looked at Winnipeg. In my mock, I had them going Nicholas Merkley at pick 17. And both we alluded to it a little bit at pick 17 that we wanted to sort of ease the loss of Evander Kane. And I thought Gabriel Carlson eased the loss of Zach Bogosian, a former number two overall pick with a shutdown defenseman. Obviously, once we got to Ottawa at 18, we took Carlson off the board. So that got rid of that plan out the window. And we figured when we settled on our consensus of going Kyle Connor with 17, for 25, we have them going with another winger. Possibly... He might be the only guy to fall farther than Daniel Sprung, and we went with Nicholas Merkley. Daniel Sprung only didn't fall as far as Nick Merkley because there weren't enough picks. We didn't do enough picks. He fell out of the mock. I definitely wasn't going to think about taking him with any of the next second round picks. You could, if you uh, sold, I don't know how you could have sold me on him, but. Uh, that would have been, I don't know. If somebody can sell me on Daniel Sprung, do it in the comments below. Um, it will be a fun debate. I've had this debate a few times now. That's why I did a little research. So, you know, do what you got to do. Comment below if you have a thought about that. Um, at pick 26, Montreal. I had them taking a big Russian in Durgachev. I thought, you know, this guy's huge. He's 6'4", big winger. I think he's 200 pounds, just a big boy, ready to, you know, that may be two or three years down the road. Goes great with Sherback coming up. And um, that's somebody that you just think to yourself, that, that's Montreal. Montreal, you know, have a big forward there. Um, they wanted Vanek a couple years ago. He didn't really work out for them. They tried, but it didn't work out. And I feel Durgachev can fill a role that plays on the wing well. They have Pacioretty, but right wing, they're pretty poor. So, um, you know, if you only have Brendan Gallagher and Tory Mitchell, as we know, Tory Mitchell's a great bottom six guy, but he's not a good top six guy. So, and we tried it because we were tanking. We tried the Tory Mitchell experiment in our top six. So I had Durgachev going to Montreal at 26. For me at 26, 
I had them taking Joel Eck Erickson, bigger two-way center. I figured he fit into Montreal in terms of depth down the road and be able to come in and help them. He's a guy I've been seeing go all over the 20s. And he's number four in terms of European skaters in the central scouting ranking. So getting number four European player late in the first round wouldn't be a bad pick. And ultimately, we settled on neither of our guys. Andy, you want to take this one? Um, you know, I've already given my spiel on Colin White, but I thought he was a good fit for Montreal. Um, he's just a guy that could fill, fill a good role for them uh, down the middle. This is kind of where um, things get real in terms of centers. So that's where I had... Um, that's where I had White go. I mean, that's where White ended up going was Montreal at 26. Um, at 27, Anaheim, I had Brock Bozer. Um, he doesn't end up uh, really getting in our consensus. Um, but I thought, you know, forwards. They could use forwards in Anaheim because they have the goalie. Goalies. Goalies. Um, as disappointing as it is, I'm a big Gibson fan. And. If Josh gets this far watching this, he's a big Anderson fan. Um, so they don't need the goalie. They definitely don't need the defense. But, you know, they're losing Matt Valeski this year. Um, you know, they have Patrick Maroon and Kyle Palmieri. But, you know, you can only have – rely on, you know, Getzlaff and Perry so much. Really, everybody else is kind of just riding their coattails, hoping for the best. And I thought a guy like – um. Bozer there, bigger, could help them. So I thought he fit Anaheim well when I uh, had him as the top forward, in my opinion, at the time going there. For Anaheim in a uh, pick 27, I went with Philip Schlafik. He's two way center out of the queue. And you can see at this point we had somewhat similar thinking in terms of uh, where we wanted to go, but the depth of the of two-way centers here at the end of the first round just led to disparity between which one. So it's with similar reasoning that I went with. Shalopic, a good player, two-way center, had some depth to that team, but... Ultimately, this is where we went with Eck Erickson. Yeah, we went with Eck Erickson here. Um, we both had him already gone. Uh, Mid-20s, as Dylan said, it made sense. And they could use a bottom six shutdown center like Eck Erickson. We've talked him up already, and it just made sense. Anaheim being in the Western Conference, they need, I think, you have Ryan Kessler there as your second line center, but a good guy to learn from and uh, Erickson learning from Kessler. That's a good guy to learn from to know how to play defense in the NHL as a forward. Um, Kessler is one of the top five, in my opinion, at, at his role. So made sense with that Erickson going there in the end. Um, at pick 28, Tampa Bay, I had them taking a big forward in Jordan Greenway. Uh, a big player is what they need. You think about it. They have uh, Johnson, Kucherov, Paquette, Palat, Killorn, Stamkos. Stamkos is all right, but I'm well, uh, he's good. He's good, but I mean in size. He's all right in size. But all the other guys are small. They're small guys. They need a big winger. They need a guy to kind of uh, – not necessarily enforce, but a guy that's there to be like, hey, you're not going to mess with my teammates. You're not going to mess with my line mates. And I'm going to sit in front of the net. And you're not really going to have a, a chance to move me because I'm big. And 6'5", Jordan Greenway made sense there for Tampa Bay. Um, they're fine on defense, in my opinion. They have a top seven, for crying out loud, that they play regularly. <laughs> 
that's a new feature that uh, Google Hangouts has, by the way. Um, so, yeah, I had Jordan Greenway going at 28 to Tampa Bay. Dylan? At 28, I looked at Tampa Bay. They have, Andy's already mentioned, their forwards, Stamkos, Palat, Drew, and all those guys. And so I looked at, I figured they would go more so of defense. I ended up with Jeremy Roy. And I figured you can name all these defensemen that they have on their team. I mean, all these top forwards that they have on their team. But defensemen, it was what came to mind was essentially Victor Hedman, who was obviously a high pick a long time ago. So, offensive defensemen here. I was thinking, but then once we began discussing it, I obviously they went all the way this year with the exception of winning the cup. And I figured it makes sense for them to go with whatever, but if they were going forward, I preferred they go the size route because of all their offensive talent. And that's how we settled on uh, Durgachev here. Big guy. Yeah, made sense. Made sense to put a big guy in uh, Tampa Bay. And Durgachev was still on the board. I had him going to Montreal, so he fell and made sense. Um, a pick 29. Now, I've got a few mistakes on here, so just bear with me. Um, Billy has pick 29. Um, I had them taking uh, Carlson. So Carlson made sense here. The thing about Philly, shut down defensemen. Defense for Philly. They took uh, forward and Lawson and Kraus. You think forward for, eh. Wow, it's getting to the end of the video. So, I mean, the show, not able to talk, talk too much. Um, Gabriel Carlson, tough guy. A loss in Kraus, tough guy. You think of Philly, tough, Broad Street Bullies. They had Craig Berube as their coach. Like, that guy was the guy that leads the league in penalty minutes all time. So, it made sense there for uh, me to have Carlson going there as a uh, shutdown defenseman, future shutdown defenseman for them. Uh, I think this pick is what they got for Coburn. I'm not 100% sure, but Coburn is a uh, – shut down defenseman as well. So replace him with uh, Carlson in a few years made sense to me. Dylan, who do you have Philly taking at 29? At 29, I had the Philly going with Philip Al. He's a, a power forward, which automatically put him into consideration for me at Philly. He's out of Sweden. He's one of the top 10 European skaters and I figured another the depth of just two way forwards in this draft might as well grab another winger while they're here since it, take this guy maybe come in and help some depth down the road. Ultimately, once again we went with a two way center in Harkins instead. You see the trend here with uh, two-way centers. By the way, I did mention her. I made the mistake earlier with uh, Philly and Arizona switching picks when I said 29 and 32 when it's 30 and 32. Thank you, Dylan, for correcting me. Uh, well, reminding me not to mess that up multiple times. Um, Harkins, you think about it, they have Giroux. They have Shen who plays center and wing and Couturier that plays center and wing. But having Harkins there as a true center going up and down the middle um, made sense for Philly in terms of a guy that could play next to Kraus long term and help them try and uh, make the most of their situation. It's a tough division they're in with um, Pittsburgh obviously playing as well as they do. And um, the Islanders, they're, the Islanders are getting better. They're young and they're getting better. So, uh, the Flyers need to play catch-up offensively. 
I know they have Giroux and Voracek, but I think Harkins here makes sense. Um, with our last pick of our mock draft, if you made it this far, like the video, because evidently you like our voice, uh, our voices. I don't really, you know, I'm not going to co-sign on that, but all the power to you. Thank you for watching this far. Um, 30th pick with Arizona's pick. I had them taking Killington. And, uh, you know, he fell from midterm to uh, the final rankings. There are a lot of defensemen I saw, like, between picks 22 and 42, I believe there are 10 defensemen picked in the mock I was looking at to reference. And um, Killington had fallen, as we said before, and not to beat a dead horse, but, you know, he's a good offensive defenseman. Um, kind of reminded me of Ristolainen in terms of the description. So I thought, you know, this is a good guy for Arizona to have. Arizona, as we said earlier, has needs everywhere. And, uh, you know, in my mock, I had them taking Strom. So it just made sense for them to answer defense here. So that's why I had Killington going to them at 30. Pick 30 for me for Arizona was where I had my first goalie going. In my mock, I had them taking Mackenzie Blackwood. Uh, one of the higher ranked goalies. I think it makes sense for Arizona. They're a rebuilding team. They're one that you don't necessarily view as being a potential contender next year. They're not one of the quick rebuilds like what uh, Calgary and Colorado have done the past couple of years. They're more of a couple of years down the road, and they have Mike Smith and that locked up for a couple of years. So you take your goalie, you let him develop for a couple of years while you keep Smith in as a veteran presence, and eventually he'll be ready to take over, hopefully, as your team is ready to contend. Um, ultimately, since we settled on Samsonov already being gone at pick 21 and Arizona also having pick 32, what Andy said to sell me on not going goalie here is that they're not going to be worried about the Sabres taking a goalie at 31 if we've already taken one at 21. So we settled with Philip Schlopek here, two-way center. You think address this, then the Sabres won't, will take whatever, and then you can possibly look more into addressing the goalie there. and Make sure you get somebody without risking losing them between the two picks you have. Yeah, it's completely, that's, that is how it really went down. Like, it, it just made sense. Like, Samsonov goes at 21 in our mock. Now, all of a sudden, we're looking at our own consensus, and we're like, hey, if you're Arizona, do you really take the goalie when you know no one in Buffalo's not taking another goalie? Or what are they going to be, the Carolina Panthers, the year they drafted Cam Newton? Let's draft Cam Newton. Let's draft uh, two more quarterbacks because just in case, let's draft three. Um, so drafting three goalies doesn't make sense if you're the Buffalo Sabres right now. Um, draft one. And uh, Arizona can wait on theirs. And Chalopic was a, a good guy to have for them. Uh, center, like I said, I had had them taking Strom earlier and Center is something they should ha need. Coming from the queue, he should have an offensive background, and Strom is offensive, better two-way game, obviously. Um, but Chalopic can help them offensively, although he is from where he is. So, yeah, so Chalopic was at pick 30. Just to do a recap, if you made it this far, um, it went McDavid 1, Eichel 2, Hannafin 3, Strom 4, Marner 5. Rantanen six, Kraus seven, Provorov eight, Meyer nine, Warinsky ten, Garyanov eleven, Zaka twelve, Barzal thirteen, Bittner fourteen, Zaboral fifteen, Jacob Larson sixteen, Connor seventeen, Gabriel Carlson eighteen, Zvechnikov nineteen, Konechny twenty, Samsonov twenty one, Debrusk twenty two. 
Killington, 23. Shabbat, 24. Merkley, 25. White, 26. Eck Erickson, 27. Durgachev, 28. Harkins, 29. And Chalapic, 30. We did this for an hour and a half. Um, we really thank you for watching. If you made it this far, yeah, like I said before, pick 30. You should probably give this a like and subscribe because we will be doing something weekly. Comment below some feedback if you think live shows are something we should do. We don't really intend on doing hour and a half live shows every time like we did with uh, Golden Sports Report in the past. Um, but if we do live shows, we, we will do uh, our best to try and do keep them regular and on a schedule, but feedback uh, is something that we uh, really would appreciate. Dylan, do you have anything you want to say? Just if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Any feedback is welcome, good, bad. Thoughts on this, thoughts on the new format, whether you like it better or worse than the old format, what you want to see us do next. We love doing this. We are the Sport Geeks. We'll be the first people to tell you that, and we look forward to doing more videos for you in the future. And with that, that is the uh, end of the Sport Geeks NHL Mock Draft Special. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you all next week.